why do so many Greek students take a couple of semesters of Greek, maybe even four or five, and then later on, they forget their Greek? Well, in this video, we're going to ask that question, not just of me, but also of some other Greek professors. Coming up right after this. <music> This video is sponsored by Logos Bible Software. I'm a long time user of Logos Bible Software and I use their software every single day. And I encourage you to do the same. Did you know that with Logos Bible Software you can fill in not just read Greek grammars, but you can fill in the workbook exercises for many Greek grammars. All you need to do is just type in the, in the box that they give you and it will save that for later use and you can even come back to it and edit it again later on. Get your copy of the Logos Fundamentals Edition with 50% off at mntg.me slash Logos. Thank you to Logos Bible Software for supporting this channel. Why do students of Biblical Greek Learn Biblical Greek, do two, three, four, sometimes even more semesters of Greek and forget later on. They, they might even use some tools and everything like that, but they just lose their ability with the language. In fact, even as they use the tools, they lose their ability with the language. Why is this? Well, in this video, I've asked two Greek professors to help me to answer these questions. The first one is Dr. Sam Lamison. Dr. Lamison has been teaching Greek for about 20 years, and he's been teaching Greek uh, more recently at Knox Theological Seminary. The second one is Dr. Rob Plummer, and you know Dr. Rob Plummer from the Daily Dose of Greek. And between these two and my own answers, we've got for you about four or five answers that I'm going to go through today. This is why students lose their Greek. Here's the first answer from Dr. Sam Lamison. One is that students don't have enough Greek to really use it. So if students only have one year of Greek, they're right at the point where they could begin to, to use the text. And for many students, they fulfill that requirement and then they go no farther. And as a result of that, their Greek is never going to be of that much help to them because they've gotten right to the edge and then let the boulder roll back over them, if you will. And so that's a serious problem. So one of the things that Dr. Lemerson is really focusing on in this question is the fact that many people think of beginning Greek as the end of their learning journey. If I learn beginning Greek, that's all I need to know. And this is purely just wrong. Beginning Greek is actually called beginning Greek because it gives you the beginning stages of Greek. Because you've finished beginning Greek does not mean you know Greek, nor does it mean you're going to have any real power or capacity with the language. And so you're going to take just beginning Greek and go on with it as if you've got what you need is really you're fooling yourself. You've got barely enough to get by at that point. You can stumble through the language, but you need to go a lot further. So this is a really important point from Dr. Lamison, and I really appreciate him sharing this reason with us. Another reason students give up on Biblical Greek is that they don't hit like buttons on YouTube videos. So I want to encourage you, hit the like button on this video if you're getting value out of this. Let's get back to it. What Dr. Lamison is really talking about here flows well into what Dr. Plummer shares in his first reason. Let me play that for you now. For this, I'm going to use uh, the analogy of diet and of nourishment, of food to help us understand this. So one reason that students wander away from Greek too quickly is they, is they think of learning Greek like a, a fad diet rather than a lifestyle. I'm sure, like me, you've known people who have wanted to lose weight, maybe lose 20 pounds, maybe lose 100 pounds, and they go on some crazy diet and they do it, right? And yay, they're the right weight now, they're where they want to be, and then you see them a year or two later, five years later, and they've regained the weight, right? Because they, as soon as they, they got down to their target weight, they just went back to eating, <laughs> eating their old pattern again, right? And so people think, oh, Greek is a semester study, or Greek is a two-semester study, rather than Greek is a lifestyle of reading the Bible in the original languages, right? It's, 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 not, it's not something we can cram and then have it. It's, it's a matter of lifestyle. I have a friend... Travis Kearns, and he lost over 100 pounds, uh, and this was like 12, 15 years ago. He's still 
the same weight, essentially. He may have gained a few pounds, but he's still very healthy. What's the difference? The difference is he started exercising, he's still exercising. And I asked him about this, and he said, the difference is also, I have this app on my phone, and I always input all the calories I eat every day. So I'm always aware, um, you know, how many calories I'm, I'm burning and how many calories I'm taking in. It's just, it's become a habit. It's a lifestyle for him. It's become a lifestyle. And because of that, it's something he can sustain. He's going to sustain the rest of his life. And that's what, that's what Greek should be. It should be a, a lifestyle we sustain rather than something we cram in three months or six months or nine months and then think somehow that's going to stick with us the rest of our life without nourishing and continuing that. What Dr. Plummer is talking about here is something I've also noticed. However, I've regarded it, talked about it more in the sense of talking about learning a subject. Let's say you wanted to learn about the American Civil War. What you could do is you could go and get a couple of books on the American Civil War that give you a general overview of it, and that would give you a pretty good understanding of the overarching flow of the war, uh, the sides, the constraints they had, and those kind of things. And so someone could then quiz you a little bit on the Civil War, and you'd probably do okay. Two books is a pretty good grounding in any given topic. But language is not like this. You can't read two Greek grammars, and now you just have it nailed down. Language is different. Language is a skill, not merely knowledge. Yes, you need the knowledge for the language, but the language is a skill, not just the knowledge. And so skill takes time to learn. So when you finish beginning Greek, really, you've got the basics of the skills, but you're struggling with comprehension. You're struggling with even just putting the language together, but you've got the basics there. So now you can start to really develop and hone the skills and that takes time. And that's exactly what Dr. Plummer is getting at here. People treat beginning Greek or Greek generally as if it's just a piece of knowledge to learn rather than as a skill to acquire over a long period of time. And that mindset of I'm going to acquire the skill and I'm going to practice it until I become proficient at it is really, really important if you actually do want to have that real skill in the language. This is reflected really in people's understanding of how they come to learn languages. Listen to what Dr. Lamison adds to this discussion. A second reason that besides not having enough Greek is not really understanding how to learn languages. Languages that are not spoken like Greek and Hebrew are even more difficult because of the fact that you can't speak to another person and so you're just learning to read. And that makes it more difficult to hold the language after you've learned it, if you're not careful. So what can we do about that? And I will offer you the same advice that was offered to me by my Greek professor and my dissertation mentor, Dr. Scott McKnight. And he told students, if you will just read Greek for 10 minutes a day, you will find yourself not giving up what you have. And if you read it for a little more each day, you'll find yourself getting a little bit better day by day. And we need to think of learning Greek as this mountain that we are climbing. We're not going to do it today, but if we can just make a little bit of effort to go a few steps upward on the mountain, then we're, we're getting there. None of us know Greek perfectly. We're all having to continue to study, continue to look things up. But if we can just get a little bit better by reading 10 or 15 minutes a day, it will help you in incredible ways. So what Dr. Lamison has just said really goes back to the idea of language as a skill and how the skill really takes time and repeated use to develop. Skill doesn't just come from reading a book. Skill comes because we take time to use the skill, hone the skill, improve the skill. And that's what reading the biblical languages are all about. I'm going to give you another reason I think students give up on Greek. And that is that often when they learn Greek in seminary, the skills that they're taught or the tools that they're given really to acquire the language are not appropriate for full mastery of the language. And so students just give up. And so here's what I mean. 
When you start beginning Greek, you're going to learn the words that occur 50 times or more in the Greek New Testament. Now, when I did second year Greek, and when many people do second year Greek, you're required to learn more words. And often, the words you're required to learn go down to, say, 20 occurrences or less. Now, the challenge with this is that to go from 50 occurrences and up, you've got about 330 words. But if you're going from 20 to 50 occurrences, then you're adding about 600 new words, which is quite a lot of words to learn. Now, if you're going to keep going using that same system, the number of words you have to learn increases with each delta that you've got to pass through. So to learn nine down to 19 occurrences, you're learning more words. To learn to 18, there's even more than learning 19. If you're going down to 15, you're going to learn probably another 400 words to go from 20 down to 15. And that's 450, I think it is, something like that. And then to get down to 10 is you know, even more, hundreds more. So it just gets harder and harder. And so if you're ever going to learn to read the New Testament or use the language efficiently and, you know, without looking words up all the time so that you're actually able to enjoy the language, then you're needing a different approach. This approach of learning vocabulary by occurrence is actually going to make learning Greek harder and you're going to want to give up a lot sooner. So this is another reason I think many students, they'll do a semester, they'll do two semesters, they'll try using this approach to take their Greek further and it just gets too hard and they just give up. They just don't do it and they don't have the skills to carry on and so they stop and they lose those skills. So I hope this has been helpful. I want to encourage you if you do want to learn Biblical Greek to do what Dr. Plummer and Dr. Lamison say. Take a long-term approach to the language and then use the tools and a system that are designed to scale over that long period of time. Now in another video, Dr. Plummer and I will give you some reasons why people don't carry on their Greek beyond that. Not so much about why they lose them, but why they don't carry them on. So look out for that in a later video as well. But I'd love to hear from you. If you learnt Greek and then you lost your Greek, I would love to hear from you what you think contributed to that. Why did you lose your Greek? And then what did you do to turn that around? Leave a comment in the comment section below and I look forward to hearing from you there. And also, if you haven't already done so, go to masterntgreek.com slash roadmap and download my Roadmap to Mastery. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, keep taking small, consistent steps toward mastery. We'll see you then.